so today I am going to be joined by Miguel from Elm Road, um, beautiful artisan candle uh, brand and um, and he's the founder of it and we are going to talk about scents. So let me get him in. Hello, you. While we're waiting for him. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can you? Yes, brilliant. I can hear you very well. Great. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Good. We've got quite a few people in today. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> is this your studio space? Yes, it is. And I've got some candles burning later. Uh, oh. burning here behind me just ready for the demonstration later perfect so, i wish you could smell um the nice scents in here <laughs> i know I, I have been um burning this today i love it great it's a good choice I'm a, yeah i'm a floral girl so <laughs> so um thank you so much for joining me today and thank you everybody to be um coming into this live chat session as well so um i think we should just briefly introduce ourselves and then we can just crack on in sharing anything that's smelly <laughs> yes sure yeah you so want, you um, want to start yeah 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 so um if you don't know me i am uh, a skin and tcm Ch chinese traditional wellness um practitioner um so i i take care of skin but from a perspective that i feel that skin is always a, a reflection of our internal well-being so uh, our treatments and our products um are all we want to try and treat from within so uh we look at our well-being um and also look at different ways or devices to try and initiate a real biological reaction before we put skincare products on um, obviously, I put together this scent series. Last week, we had um, uh, Nicola's, um, who is an artisan perfumer for Flores. Um, is that because I feel scent is something that's very important to our lives and also within the beauty industry, as much as I talk about skincare. Um, when we design our skincare products, we make sure that we have um, scents that's very nicely blended as well because. I feel that to be encouraged and to, you know, continuously using a skincare product and to be good to your skin, you need that kind of real nice experience. And um, the experience uh, comes from, you know, the texture, the scent. So, and also if you are, you, you, you need a good sense, a smell, um, your brain would, you know, excretes endorphins. So it's great for relaxation. Um, and it makes everything better, basically. Yeah. Great. So <laughs> I'm Miguel. I'm the founder of Elm Road. Um, Elm Road started as a bit of an adventure of myself. I used to work in the corporate world. I used to have a senior role in an advertising agency. And, uh, and during one of uh, my... Uh, travels abroad, you know, during a very stressful week of meetings with clients, um, I sort of felt really drained um, before catching my, my flight back to London. It was a night that I didn't manage to sleep. I was quite, quite stressed and anxious about a big project that was going on. And uh, I thought to myself, I'm just going to take um, a bit of time off. Managed to, I was in San Francisco at the time time managed to actually go and see the city since i'm there and um yeah and try and disconnect a bit from all this craziness going on around me so i took an uber um i asked him just drop me anywhere in the middle of uh of nature i just want to be surrounded by by nature um and i ended up in the golden gate park in san francisco and as i walked in the amazing aroma of the eucalyptus trees really just shocked me. As soon as I got out of the cab, I, that's the first thing I noticed. And, uh, and then I looked up and the trees were huge. And then I suddenly realized there was a bit of a memory there of 
I've smelled this before. I haven't been here before, but I've smelled this. Um, and thinking, I just as I was walking in the park, um, I realized that there was one, that particular memory finally came to my head. And it was a place where my parents and I used to go very often on the weekend. Um, because in Spain, just a bit of backstory, in Spain, you can't drink water straight from the tap in most places. Um, and that's where I'm <laughs> from. We used to go to the mountains and there was this particular fountain that had a eucalyptus tree right next to it. Um, and, and that was exactly the memory that came to my head. So my head just got lost into this sort of thought of, you know, my childhood and memories and so on. And, and then I completely forgot about all that stress and all, you know, that, uh, that, that project that was keeping me anxious. And as I walked by, I started to, you know, really disconnect and just focus on nature and, and scent. And this is where I had that moment of thinking, scent is really connected to our well-being. And really, if I can package this experience that I've just had and sell it as a product and help other people with their, with their well-being, then let's do it. And that's how I started my adventure that led me to, to here today. That's such a nice story, isn't it? Like, um, actually, I met Miguel um, at the same agency that we worked with each other. So both of us are the, you know, those loose horses that came out of the, <laughs> like had enough of, of that world. And then we came out and then found our own, you know, passion and then express, I think like creatively and thoughtfully in our, you know, in different ways um, to try and help ourselves and help other people. Exactly. Um, so I think today uh, there's quite a lot that we really want to talk about. I'm so excited. But because uh, based on last um, uh, uh, life and also what you've mentioned as well, like um, how sense can really, uh, you know, uh, affect our daily life i actually want to answer some of the questions where i've been asked a lot of um times uh, what are your favorite perfumes i guess um today we're going to talk about you know the behind the scene um and last time we talked about raw materials as well but um mo you know during this time um most accessible scents i would say uh, that you might have and you can see from the back of my my shelf as well um, would be perfumes. So I think we should just share our like favorite perfumes and then we'll just quickly talk about it and that you, you guys can leave questions on, you know, perfumes um, um, whenever you want to. Um, and then, yeah, and I think then we can talk to, about all the other raw materials and then the candles, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. yeah right. So good. I have actually chosen uh, <laughs> some perfumes that are my favorite but also it suits spring and also i think it suits very well with um this um, you know, indoors and our our mind is always trying to adapt to change as well so um they are all very i, I would say soft um nothing really pungent you see, even the colors, they are all very spring, I would say, very light colors. So the first one I want to quickly talk about would be, um, maybe I'll start with the light. So the Estee Lauder Private Collection. Um, it's a, a perfume that's, that's launched in 1970, something like that. So it was supposed to be a formula that's bespoke to um, Mrs. Lauder. Um, but then because of, you know, she's been asked um, how, you know, what is this scent? Uh, and then they decided to launch it in, in the 70s. This, um, it's a very green floral. So it's, I like florals a lot, as you will know. Um, so it's, it's very green. It opens with some orange blossom with jasmine. And then in the heart, there's like chrysanthemum, but also this kind of, tartness from coriander like a bit of soapiness as well so it 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 smells very it's very feminine but it's also very fresh i would say um and then another one that i have been using a lot these days is a uh, galan is my favorite perfume house um it's chamate this <laughs> this is a <laughs> it's a nice a, bottle a, yeah, so this is a 70s vintage. Um, I swapped with 
uh, you know, someone with the Vintage Perfume Society with my other collection. So this is like, um, if you want to get this very soft, powdery cocoon with a bit of greenness, this would be the one I think um, out of all the Orientals that you can find uh, from from um, Gaglan. So um, I like Gaglan because it's it's very subtle, but it's very deep as well. It's very sensual uh, with the the musk, the amber base. So um, this is very spring, very light. Um, I actually use it uh, in the middle of the day and also when I before I sleep. Um, just very powdery. And another Galan, it's my favorite. Uh, this is again a vintage bottle. I don't have a new bottle. Galan Shalama. So um, launched in the twenties. Um, I think if you if you like perfume, you you would have been um, smelling it a lot. Um, it's very oriental, very floral, very uh, powdery. It starts with iris, uh, rose. But then there's always this vanilla, very balmy vanilla enveloping, you know, you as well. Um, and then there are some sweetness at the back with the tonka beans as well. Mm -hmm. um, the newer versions, which you would be able to buy on the market now, I feel that they are more citrusy. So right. it's even better for this, this time. This season. Um, yeah. yeah, this season. And, um, but I have to say the other toile is my favorite formula because it's most wearable, I would say. Mm. The paklam can be, um, it's nice for an event, but then um, because how sensual and cocoony it is, it kind of, it drags me down, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's like, oh, then I get very lazy. Like. <laughs> nice. Um, and then the last one is something that's completely different from um, all these old perfume houses um, is something from Lush. Okay. Um, it's called Dirty, mm, um, which is a play it. on yeah. So it's a completely play on words. Um, mm. It's a completely fresh, clean um, smell, um, and I think out of all this is the most accessible in price as well, which is yeah. one that I think it's great to that you can blind purchase um, online. Um, so I, I'm really starting to like um, Lush perfumes. Um, well, how they, how they, um, you know, blast out fragrance in their shop is another thing because yes. I think they're really so dominating the whole space. Yeah. It's almost like some. You scent. can smell it from miles away. <laughs> yeah, to me, it sends pollution. But <laughs> um, that aside, their perfumes, I feel that it's. It's um whole the whole range. It's very interesting that the concept yeah. of and and they try to use a lot of natural ingredients as well. Exactly, where exactly. That's what I wanna also mention. Like so, these ones, uh, most of them use synthetic fragrances, where um basically they're chemical molecules that mimic. For example, if I say rose, it, it might not be a rose. It might be mimicking. Um, the chemical components of rose um, but then with um, lush they are in the ingredients they are re much relatively longer than these ones because there's a combination of synthetic parfum and also uh, here there's like la lavender absolute neroli oil thyme absolutes etc etc mm. so i think they are good to experiment um, for the price and for the combination interesting combinations on synthetics and natural fragrances as well yep yeah so this is it's called dirty but it's very clean very fresh and it's got lavender um thyme um sandalwood tarragon as well so herby herby clean i would say nice. great yes i i smelled it and i really liked it um that one um in my case, I tend to gear more towards um, woody sort of scent. Um, I'm a woody kind of person, but I don't necessarily like what they market as male scents. I quite, I think scent is so subjective. You can't really, you can't really put a gender to it. I think that's just a marketing strategy that they've always used to sort of place the the fragrance towards a particular demographic. Um, but I, I. I actually prefer when they 
market the, the fragrance as um, as a unisex fragrance because then it's up to the consumer to decide whether that's for them or not so i've gone through different phases in my life from not really caring too much about scent <laughs> in my teenage years to then buying lots of commercial fragrances um just because you want to try and experiment whereas now i'm more of a minimalist um when it comes to to fragrance and i tend to gear more towards um sort of especially now more indie brands that might not be as well known so in terms of my you know if you ask my friends what does miguel smell like there is one particular scent that i've been using for the last few years i recently stopped because i finished my last bottle and i thought let's try something else and i'll tell you which one that is uh a bit later but that was molecule 01 so i don't know if yeah, you yeah yeah Plain so lavender. that is is one scent oh sorry my dogs are going crazy <laughs> um, <laughs> it's one scent that i actually came came across by accident i was walking down the street somewhere and someone was wearing it and I had to stop and say, what are you wearing? Because, you know, and, and a lot of people will tell you when they're wearing it, they get that a lot. Um, yeah. and, and they told me it's Molecule 01. So I researched the story and I found out that it's actually a very simple formulation. It's ISO E Super, which is one of the fragrance ingredients in a lot of perfumes, just to give them longevity as a base note. And it's got a woody, even though it's not the natural scent, it's synthetic, it's got a woodiness to it. Um, but the whole idea is that it, ISO is super blends with your own pheromones in your body. So everyone sort of um, the nuance and how the fragrance projects out of yourself, it's slightly different. Yeah. So not everyone smells the same way. Um, and the other curiosity about it is that you can't, after a while, you don't smell it yourself. So other people will pick up, other people will pick up on it, but you yourself won't when one realize so you you will get complimented a lot where you have forgotten what you smell like um, <laughs> <laughs> so so that's that's the first one that i wanted to mention um then um for the summer i quite tend more towards more fresh citrusy scents um and i love the scent of orange blossom as you will tell because a lot of my yeah. my candles and my home fragrances have I love it as well. neroli and orange blossom yeah uh, but also citrus notes like lemongrass or grapefruit mandarin etc i just find them very uplifting um yeah. so in the summer i really like neroli portofino by tom ford i think it's, yeah, it's it. extremely expensive but it smells there you go That's <laughs> the only tom ford i have <laughs> that is a good choice though <laughs> exactly right I got gifted a really big bottle of it. Um, so in the summer, after taking a shower, take a couple of splashes and it just smells amazing. Um, wow. it's, it's just like being in, in the Amalfi Coast when you take I know, a sniff right? of it. Mm. And it's such a nice, um, I think it's such a nice blend as well, um, this Neroli. Because, um, you know, there are a lot of Neroli um, uh, perfumes as well. And I just feel this one, it's it's got that citrusy that floral in there but i always feel that it's a movement um mm -hmm. this this neroli moves so it's like a breeze or it's it's not just either like pungent floral or pungent citrus mm -hmm. yeah it, it creates a lot of movements and i guess like if, if you put it on and i put it on um it will smell very different, different as right. well yeah and i just find that it's it's just epitomizes summer so yeah. you smell it it just takes you to you know uh blue sea you know that's the sort of setting that you that you get from it like a, a grove a lemon grove tree nearby or something like that it's it's a really refreshing scent so for me that's my top pick for the summer um Great. then when it comes again for sort of like a more uh in the evening uh or a special occasion where you want to, you know, to wear something to make you feel special. I I like oriental woody scents with like notes of like tobacco or um, sandalwood, tonka. Um, I like that slight sweetness, vanilla-like, but yeah. with a bit of a, you know, woody base. Um, so I've got two 
choices for, for that. Uh, the first one, my, my favorite was Bois d'Argent uh, by Dio. It's uh, sort of like a unisex again. It started as a male fragrance, yeah. but then they marketed it as a unisex part of the capsule collection. Um, but it smells amazing. It's, um, it's got juniper berry as a top note. So you smell the spiciness first, but then you can feel or you can smell all the woody notes, um, spicy notes, and a little bit of sweetness as well. It's, it's really nice. Um, so if you haven't smelled it, next time you have the opportunity, I would definitely recommend it. And it's, again, it's got, it appeals to both male and female. Um, and then the other one is Tobacco Vanilla, uh, or Tobacco Vanille by Tom Ford. Yeah. It can be quite intense. So especially the oil one, um, I would just put a couple of drops in your pulses or behind your ears, and it's just enough. People will, will notice that, you know, you're wearing a really nice fragrance. It's not as overpowering as Black Orchid, for example. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's a little bit, it's intense, but a little bit less overpowering. And uh, it's another one of my all-time favorite scents. In fact, one of my home fragrances scents called Secret. It's got a um, few traces and similarities. It was a little bit inspired by that scent because the memory behind uh, Secret um involves an evening where i was wearing tobacco vanilla so so it's part of that memory um so that scent has got tobacco leaf in it it's got tonka it's got a little bit of bergamot as well it smells quite uh manly but at the same time it's you know it's a lot of ladies love that scent as well when they smell it um so yeah so it's yeah, really and I guess well. when, it, when when tobacco vanilla like tobacco scent in candles when being burnt indoors it can have a very different effect than putting it on as a you know close companion because this tobacco kind of smokiness really gives that very cozy feeling mm. um, in a candle that you 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 know like a campfire crackling fire or you know a, a, a fireplace that you, you can usually sit down and and chill and just be very warm and comfortable as well. Exactly. It's really warming. It's really like, I, I think people when they, if they don't, if they're not into fragrance, when they hear tobacco, they go, oh, does it smell like a packet of cigarettes? So the first <laughs> reaction I always get, and it's like nothing at all. Mm -hmm. It comes from the tobacco leaf, the dry leaves. Um, and it's got a very different scent. And like you were saying, even I can notice the difference between the candle and the diffuser as well. Um, exactly. I actually, when you're burning the candle, the scent is a little bit more mellow, whereas in the diffuser, you get more of the tobacco notes as it evaporates. So, so yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a very sort of interesting ingredient to work with. Great, cool. So I think like we've already, already touched on, you know, the fragrances, um, synthetic and natural in ingredients. And as much as we, and, like we use synthetic fragrance as you know in in our perfumes uh in both of our businesses we use natural fragrance yeah. um and i think it's a it's a very interesting topic that you know has been discussed for quite a while um because that it, it's also linked to you know the clean and green movement as well on like natural using something that's natural um what's your stand like, why did you start using you know you you went down the route of natural fragrances instead of um you know synthetics when you actually do candles so the main reason why i went or i chose uh, essential oils is because of the therapeutic uh, benefits um essential oils come from um, natural ingredients they come from petals uh, flowers uh, from uh, woods resins, um, herbs, you name it. So, but they, the, the main, one of the main differences between synthetic and essential oils is the therapeutic properties. Um, like you mentioned earlier, synthetic fragrances are made by chemists. Um, most of them derive from uh, petroleum and they are created to mimic a natural scent or a scent that we experience in, around us in nature. However, um, 
or, or not however but the main reason why they do it is because of the the, the price as well obviously uh, and the resources um so natural scents are more expensive uh because of the process required to extract that essence from the plant and they're quite valuable and some of them can be even precious in terms of uh, price point whereas and synthetics some of them don't even exist. sorry and some of them don't even exist correct so exactly. like lily yeah. of the valley there's no lily of the valley in nature exactly yeah. and most of the fruits um you can only extract essential oils from citrus fruits and it's extracted from the from the skin from the peel of the citrus fruit so all the candles that i see advertised as natural and then they smell like rhubarb and custard or um fig um you know they're all synthetic um so they could be naturally derived because there's also such a thing as a hybrid uh, or botanical fragrance which is also created in a lab but is created using um natural ingredients that are then um sort of put through a process to modify them and create another scent that smells like something else so yeah. um so that also exists um but yeah it's um it's an interesting topic and it's a yeah. bit of a minefield yeah it is i think because like with you when you work with candles um it's you know it's being burnt in the ambience then when it comes to my field um it gets even more complicated because there will be um, products that you will leave on the skin, um, either leave on or rinse off, mm. and um, under you know under the regulations in in um, in Europe, you need to we need to have you know even declare what are the allergens that are there are twenty six different allergens that are in these natural um, essential oils. Um, whenever we need to, you know, finish a formulation of a, of a, uh, of a skincare product. I've always been asked many times, and even from the last time with the, the live, I've actually got some questions about how, um, there are two different questions. I remember one says, um, how do I actually choose, um, uh, most scents are sensitive, makes you sensitive, makes your skin sensitive. How do I choose ones that don't don't make your skin sensitive? It's already a super big question because, uh, and then another person says, why when I smell something, I get sensitive and I get very dizzy. So now we're talking about sensitivity to the skin or sensitivity to the brain yeah. that might also affect your skin. Yeah. So, so there are many different layers, but I guess, um, if we if we the reason why i chose um natural fragrances essential oils in my uh skincare products it's aromatherapy is a, a big thing um for me because that's my roots of my training yeah um so and i do believe in the um essences of you know from the nature that they can when when they're being contacted in our nerves um there will be effect that would be affected in our brain and also because essential oils um actually goes through the bloodstream so it can also support the well-being as well so that's functional um and also to answer you know just now when you talk about uh, liking wood scents it's very interesting as well um and i was actually trying to I, this afternoon I actually looked through the allergens list and because mm -hmm. um, I want to give some advice to people who who are always in between of you know natural or synthetic um, but according to that list that sensitivity li uh, that allergens list I would say that if you choose a wood essential oil or a resin oil the allergens are, will be relatively lower lower absolutely so so most wood um, doesn't even have um, allergens. Yeah. Restlands they would have, but they'll be usually minus uh, around like 0.3 or 5%, something like this. Then the allergens would you know, go up as you go into floral. Uh, there will be geranial, the linalool, and then all the citruses, there will be liminal, 
um, um, all these kind of more astringent kind of allergens. So um, if you are super sensitive to uh, natural ingredients, for example, and if you want to look for something that is scentless, not scentless, there's some scents, but still want to, you know, you want to indulge a bit of scents, maybe look for something with wood and resin. Yeah. Um, but on the other hand, I also want to say that because all of our products, or every, you know, natural products in in Europe, we need to adhere to the um, regulations. Um, our concentration won't even go to more than maybe one or two percent on leave on yeah. and even rinse off. If you're a bath oil, if you're using a bath oil, it might be more, um, higher, um, but it's a rinse off. So it's not something that it stays on right. the skin for a long time. So, so yeah, so I think um, natural and synthetic fragrance, it's always, it, you, we need to evaluate on context yeah. when we use it. Exactly. And I think, I think there's a big stigma about, you know, synthetic equals toxic, natural equals non-toxic, and that's not true. Um, no. There's a lot of natural ingredients that used in big quantities can be heavily toxic. Um, and even the same essential oil, depending on its purity and the supplier, the process has been where it's been extracted, it could be more uh, toxic or less. So for example, when I'm formulated scents, even though they're not going to go on the skin, you're still going to inhale them. So yeah. I always make sure I look at the medical safety data reports of all the essential oils, just to look at their toxic, 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 toxic <laughs> I can't even say it. Toxic, to, to, Toxicology. Toxic, no, toxicity levels. Something like that. I can't even pronounce it, but you know what I mean. How toxic they are. And then choose the ones that have got a lower, you know, level of that. And also look at the allergens as well. Um, but of, of course, essential oils should never be used undiluted. You always need to dilute them and, um, and also use with a lot of care. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so in terms of, um, the differences between toxic and non-toxic i think it's you know it's not it's a complex area you can't just uh put them into boxes it is very it's 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 very hard sometimes you know you know i'm subscribed to a lot of literature for beauty for example and then all of a sudden my mailbox will be like your clean beauty update and then i'll be like well this what does clean actually mean you know like mm. everything even a natural product that it's made up of chemical components um, exactly. uh, and you know, depends no on the chemical person. ingredients like yeah. what does clean actually mean and very interestingly actually to stabilize in some of my formulations to stabilize some of the natural ingredients we actually use a you know a 0 0.02 um you know synthetic preservatives because that's actually the best way to envelope and make sure right. that you know this formulation don't split your essential oils don't oxidize your vitamin c vitamin e yeah. are actually preserved in the you know in the best uh, format that it, they can be yeah. so yeah and similarly to what you were saying about beauty ingredients uh, with candles is not as strict as uh, with uh, beauty products because they don't go on the skin um, but you still need what is called a clp label uh because of the substances that it's um that it has so at the bottom of the candle or somewhere in the packaging you will always find a warning label that tells you about how to use but also if it contains any allergens you should also say them there as well um, um so that the consumer can make an informed decision so it's not yeah, yeah. as strict because um the in, the content of um fragrance or essential oil in candles is higher than in beauty products um but still it's, it's a requirement to have it and also with a warning sign. So you will always see the exclamation mark or, or things like that. Um, so that's another way of looking before you, before you buy. Um, and then there's pictograms that we need to stick to as well. And that is a legal requirement. You can't sell a um, candle or a diffuser without that information on the product. Uh, that's and that's okay. European law. Okay. Cause you know, sometimes it's it's very interesting. Like when you know, when we go to markets, you see a lot of stalls, and then there are a lot of DIY products. 
for yeah. me, obviously, I'd be able to look at, you know, skincare and, mm, well, I don't think this is even <laughs> compliance. <laughs> compliance because yeah. of the label. Um, I didn't know that actually candles, you do need to have a lot of these. Yeah, you do. And it's, um, it's quite strict. Like if you do a trade fair and someone from, you know, um, from an organization identifies you, you can get a fine. Um, so it's an important, an important aspect to, to bear in mind. But, um, but anyways, I think there's another one that's important to mention as well when it comes to raw materials, which I get a lot of questions about, which is, why are your fragrances vegan? Um, who uses animal ingredients in fragrance? And that is an interesting um, topic because there are actually, I think they're used less and less uh, because now you can easily find the synthetic versions of the animal uh, ingredients, but there is, um, especially musk originally came from uh, the genitalia of the male deer. That is a substance that, were, that was extracted and that's how it is used. So a lot of uh, coumarins and you know um the sort of vanilla like smells they come they include musk uh but there's a lot of synthetic mask as well available in the markets um so just because you see musk in a fragrance it doesn't mean it's non-vegan you should always double check with the manufacturer uh, but that's one then there is another one called amber or amber grease or yeah. gray amber um and that is the excrement it's they're all quite disgusting is the excrement of a sperm whale um, and they're massive whales and basically they found floating in the ocean and that's where the amber grease comes from. It smells really nice uh, but now again it's been mimicked and there's a lot of synthetic versions and then there's others that come from beavers um, so a lot of like leathery scents um, they are a yellowy extraction that comes from beavers and so on so always you know when you see leathery scents or you see uh, i think leathery mask amber they are the ones that i would you know a lot of vanillas as well i would always double check and make sure if you're vegan or if you you know you're you want to avoid you know animal cruelty and you're interested in cruelty free products that is one of the questions that you should always double check and ask for right um We've got a question from Lily Jet with candles. Can oh, hi, Lily. Them, <laughs> can you formulate a special scent that we imagine? Wood, spice, and vanilla. Can you formulate a scent that we imagine? Do you mean like, um, sorry, I, can you confirm if you mean if we can create a, a bespoke fragrance for you with those ingredients? Well, um, We'll leave her to answer, okay, to, yeah. to clarify. Lily Jet, if you're here, it'd be great if you can clarify your, your question. Um, but I think what we should be doing now is to, um, can you show us some of your candles and how do you yeah. take care of them? You know, like when you mentioned that you want to talk about how you take care of your candle, I, I am thrilled because to be honest, I've never really taken care of my candles until um, <laughs> yeah, until I've got that clamp from you right. um, for this but still um, it would be great if you can tell me yeah, how to use sure. it so a lot of people don't know this but you know if you don't look after your candle your candle could tunnel which means that it will sink next to the wick um, it will um, it will release more soot. Soot is that black smoke, um, you know, that a lot of candles, especially yeah. the cheaper um, ones generate. So um, so the best and most uh, practical tip is always trim your wig. Um, and by trimming the wig, it means removing some of the burnt, either cotton, if it's a cotton wig, or wood, if it's a wood wig. Now, before I do the demonstration and I show you the products, I wanted to talk about the difference between um, the waxes. So you've got paraffin wax, or the most commonly used uh, waxes out there are paraffin, which is also synthetic, comes from petrol, and is the cheaper sort of uh, version of all the, the waxes, and is widely used in the market. Uh, in fact, even luxury brands use paraffin as their base, like Jo Malone, um, also, um, 
you know, diptyque uses paraffin, I believe, uh, in a lot of synthetic fragrances. So, um, so paraffin is widely used. Um, it burns a lot quicker. And the main reason why it's favorite is because it has got a very good scent throw. And scent throw is the term that we use to say that, you know, how much it fills the room uh, with the aroma. So that's paraffin. Then you've got beeswax, which is um, obviously it comes from bees. Um, that's a non-vegan sort of um, candle wax base. Uh, it has got a bit of a sweet honey-like taste, uh, not taste, a smell to it as well. Um, so that's used by a lot of natural brands that are not necessarily vegan. Um, and then you've got the three main ones are soy or soya, um, coconut, and um, rapeseed. Now, and there's also more and more olive oil wax coming out that I've started to see. Um, now, these three have got different um, as, like things to consider. Um, my candles, I chose a bespoke blend of rapeseed and soy wax. It's 75% rapeseed, 25% soy. And the reason is because rapeseed is grown locally in the UK. Um, so it has got a much lower carbon footprint and sustainability is one of the core values of Umrose. So um, we wanted rapeseed to be, or we wanted, I say we, it's me. <laughs> I wanted to, to have a, uh, ingredients that are as local as possible. So that's why rapeseed is the main ingredient. Also, it burns really well, really clean, and it um, has got a very good scent throw. Um, soy um, helps me with the consistency and the burn time of rapeseed. I found that rapeseed on its own had a more softer sort of consistency mm. and didn't blend as well with the essential oils. Uh, so I added 25% of soy and it's non-GMO soy ethically sourced and it comes from America. Um, then there's coconut and coconut comes from tropical places. So it has got even, even though it's quite sustainable from a natural point of view, it comes from tropical places so it comes travels quite far so i that's why i favorite rapeseed um so depending on the type of wax that you work with um you should handle your candle a little bit differently because every wax has got different sort of melting temperatures and they perform slightly different so i'm going to focus on rapeseed and soy wax and it should be the same for other plant-based so the first trick and i'm going to demonstrate i've got some candles behind me I don't know if you can see them. Uh, but the first thing is how to light your candle. And I'm going to demonstrate you with a wood wick. So wood wicks, um, when I do my, uh, you know, activations in markets or trade fairs and so on, a lot of people don't are not familiar with wood wicks. Wood wicks are completely natural. They are wood. Um, they are obviously uh, non-toxic because they haven't got anything inside that would give anything, release anything toxic in the air. Um, and they make a really nice crackling sound when you burn them. However, if you don't look after them properly, they will not perform to their best. So I'll, I'll tell you a little bit more about how to look after them once you've light them. But when you light them for the first time, so what you should do is, I would always try and light them with a match instead of a lighter to just incline your candle a little bit, uh, hopefully. There you go. I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> Let's reuse the match. Why do you want to use the match instead of the lighter? Um, the lighter has got gasoline in it um, and it often leaves a black mark on your glass container as well. Oh, yes. So, yes. And the flame is quite big. So I find yes. a match works better. And this is going to be quite tricky because of the time <laughs> it takes for the flame to extinguish it. That's but okay. Basically, you just place the, the, the light, the flame, right at the base of the wick, where the wax and the wick meet. And that will make sure that the, the wood wick will burn from the bottom up instead of from the top down. Oh. And this may happen sometimes. And what has happened is that the, the, the flame just gone off. That's because there was too much wood at the top. So all you do is you wait until it's a little bit cold and then you remove the excess burnt wood do you see that there's a little bit of burnt wood there yeah so you yeah. just remove it and then you light it again and again oh there you go 
to put the flame right at the base. Because what triggers the flame is actually the wax, not the wood. So is the so mm. now now it's going on. You can see here, and I it see. will keep burning. It makes a crackling sound. I don't know if you can hear it. It's nice. Yeah. So now, so yeah. So the trick is, if you light it for the first time and the flame stops, snap off the burnt bits and light it again. Because that's because there was a little bit too much burnt wood at the top. Now, before you stop burning your candle, especially with plant-based wax, always wait until there is a full layer of melted wax. So I've got an example here. And now it's just blown. Uh, there you go. So as you can see, ah, okay. there's a full layer. Now, the reason for this, I just need to be very careful not to drop the wax <laughs> the reason for this is that plant-based wax has got a memory so um if you don't let it burn until the edges it will tunnel because you will remember where you stop it so if you only burn it for like half an hour and you only have a small circle the next time you light it it won't exactly oh okay so oh. that's a very important one and especially with soy wax coconut wax and all plant-based waxes. Um, if that has happened to you and it has tunneled, a good tip is to get some uh, aluminum foil and put it around your container. So you wrap it around and then you light. And because the heat will concentrate in the, between the aluminum, because it's, um, then it will start to melt the edges. Um, ah, now you can only do that if you have enough wick that it will survive and it won't drown once the wax melts. Uh, okay. So, Get it. so yeah, so that's uh, a little bit of a trick or of a tick. Um, tick it's not a little tick. bit, it's a big tick. <laughs> <laughs> and as you can see here, this one is the one that I just moved and the flame just stopped. Can you see that there's a big chunk of burnt wood at the top? Yes. Yeah. So that's what you need to snap off before you light it again. Ah. Otherwise, you keep burning the, the burnt wood. And it's like if I try to light a match that's already burnt, it won't ah. catch fire. It's exactly okay. the same principle. Okay. So that's with the, um, the wood wick. And I can show an example here. So this is a burnt one. All you do with your fingers, you just snap it. And then you will see that the burnt wood, uh, can you see? Yeah. It's on your fingers. You just wash your hands. And that's it. Or you can use a nail clipper as well if you don't want to use your fingers. That's another good trick. So here, for example, another candle. This one's a cotton wick. Yes, that's the one I have, right? This is chalet. It's from the same collection as the one you have. This one yeah. is a very woody one. Uh-huh. It's got sandalwood. It's one of my favorites. It's quite, I don't know. Quite, uh, it's woody, but it's got spiciness to it as well. It's like being, it's called chalet, it's inspired by the Swiss Alps. It's like being a bit in a cabin in the woods, that oh, kind of beautiful. smell. So now I'm gonna have to stand up so I can do it pro pro properly. So I don't know if, if you can see there, but there's not, the wax hasn't melted evenly at the top. Yeah. That's probably because the wick is not right in the center. So with this, which is called a wick dip deeper, you can move and place the wick towards the bit that hasn't melted while it's burning, which oh. means that the heat from the wick will move towards that unmelted wax, and then it will burn nice and evenly. So that's another trick. And another way to use this wick trimmer, which you can find on the website as well, it's to dip. So you just dip the wick in the wax and look what happens. Oh. Hardly any smoke. Okay, right. And it's waxed and ready to use for the next time. Now, as you can see, the wick now has slightly bent and there's a bit of excess. So that's what you need to trim before you light it for the next time. Because otherwise, when you light it, this may start to curl and go back in the wax or it will give you like black smoke as well. Yeah, that's, that's I think, because I have this from you, but yeah. I don't really know how much to trim. And look at mine. Yeah, so At the moment, this is the ugly. Yes, exactly. So with your wig trimmer, 
exactly. You just place it above. And yeah. this is designed so that you, if you go like that and you place it, rest it on the wax without going too deep, it will tell you exactly how to cut it. So it will oh, guide so, you. So I just need to cut it as I lay flat on it, right? Yeah, but not all the way to the bottom. This okay. part needs to rest on the... So as you can see, you should have about half a, mil, uh, half a centimeter of weight. Yeah. Yeah, so okay. just cut right. it as if you were using scissors yes and that's it ready to burn again that's quite yeah. a lot actually yeah it's because you haven't oh, yeah. trimmed your wig for quite a while <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i have i have only done it once and then i'm like well but how how much do i because to be honest i am a newbie to natural perfumes i have been using diptyque perfume since my secondary school so that was like well i'm 40 now so that's like over 20 years so I haven't really changed and I'm not a person who, you know, shops around a lot. So I just <laughs> go back to my old favorites and then I just do it all the time. And also because uh, my burning ritual uh, involves a lot of incense as well. So, so it's, it's a mix of a both. So, but I find it's a completely different experience um, mm. in terms of um, the burn time and how long does it take for this to, you know, have, scent being evaporated into the air um i feel that this takes longer for than diptyque it's almost like a blossom that has opened it just stays um very consistent and and this the scent i think it's also because of the natural ingredients as well you 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 keep smelling it it's not mm. that it will just get lost what, what a lot of people notice is that it takes longer for the scent to come through so when you light it, it will take about half an hour to an hour for you to actually notice the scent in the room. Um, but then it will stay lingering in the air a lot longer. Exactly. And I've it's actually, I know, I know you have diffuser, but I've actually been putting this just next to my bed table. Next to, <laughs> and it's, it's a diffuser already. Yeah, you can smell it. I yeah. use... Um, I use quite a lot. So depending on the wax, again, you can use a different amount of oil to like essential oil to wax ratio. I use the maximum that I can. Um, so it, it doesn't affect the consistency because I find that it gives you the best experience yes. um, with the oils. A lot of people find it overpowering, um, but I, you know, but I think it's, it's important, right? You don't want a yeah. candle that that's going to stop smelling halfway through. Yeah, so basically we're just smoking carbon dioxide. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> like great. But breathing. yeah, so if you don't have a, a wig trimmer like this, uh, a fancy one, so we sell them on the website. They're not that expensive. They're ten pounds, um, and they will really improve the quality of your of your candle. You, obviously, once it's cold, um, all you can do is just with your fingers, it will snap off, and it will come off. So I just pinched it and I removed the burnt wood, and then it's ready to, to light again. It's just very important because it will give you a much nicer result. Um, mm. And these are the other two. So the snapper, I don't need to explain, everyone has seen yeah. these ones <laughs> and is familiar with, and that is the dipper. Um, so you can get them as a set, all three, or just the trimmer on its own. Uh, but yeah, it really does improve the quality of your burn. Perfect. So, um, before we end, I think we should announce our little competition. Oh, yes. <laughs> Can you show us your new collection? I haven't seen them. Oh, yes. Um, so, the one I was burning here, doesn't melting. So, this is Summer Days, yeah. which is quite um, fresh. It's a bit like if you talk, put in fragrances in a, you know, what we were talking earlier, it would sort of fall under the same box as Neroli Portofino. So it's one of those summery scents with a neroli. It's got neroli. It's got um, verbena as well, which I love. It's a I love very, it. Yeah, it's so uplifting and so sweet, but citrusy at the same time. It's it's a really nice scent. Um, so it's got, and, and then bergamot, which is another one of my all-time favorite citrus yeah. smells. Plus bergamot, it's got a green color that's just beautiful. Um, so it looks really nice in the diffuser because it gives it a little bit of a green, emerald green color. 
Um, so that's Summer Days, and it's been formulated to give you a bit of an uplift and a refreshing feeling. Um, and then there's Summer Nights, um, which I'll show you here. That one, I finished burning, <laughs> sorry. Uh, but you can see the candle. Uh, it comes, they both come in a box like this. Um, mm. And that one is a more mellow scent. It's a more so, sort of like um, having a nice meal in the garden kind of scent. Mm -hmm. And it's got grapefruit, it's got uh, frankincense as the base, Ooh, and nice. Mei Chang as well, which is another one of those mm. essential oils that people don't really know about. It just smells so nice. Yeah, it's, um, it's Malaysia, um, Thailand, it's Indonesia. Yeah, and then it's got marjoram mm -hmm. as well which is a spicy mm. scent that I, I, I just love it. So um, they're really nice, both of them. I really, you know, it's, it's great to transition from day to night, but also summer days, because it's got a lot of verbena and citrus scent. It, uh, it avoids the insects. So if you are outside in the garden and you want to burn the candle, it will keep insects away as well. It will repel them. So Perfect. those are the two scents. And they're available in all the formats. That's great. So uh, the competition, we will be uh, pairing your Elm Road summer collection, the two yeah. of them, with two of our um, antioxidant products, one serum and one cream. Um, so antioxidants, basically, they what they do is UV pollution. They're all radicals, free radicals. And um, these are antioxidants that would just uh, help giving the shield in the skin to um, you know um, to slow down the process of conversions of the free radicals within the skin that can damage the cells and long term it can give you um, pigmentation or wrinkles etc cetera, etc cetera. so I'm just being very mindful of time uh, we will maybe cut off very soon so one hour just gone past very quickly so it we'll post I know we'll just post um, all these information in our upcoming post to this evening for the competition and um, feel free to join and also forward or tag other people. Um, I believe we've got what five days or seven days for this. We've got until Sunday. Okay, right. So, uh, and then we will draw out two winners. Great. So good to speak to you, Miguel. Yes, Thank you so much. And um, um, have a very nice evening and stay safe and stay in. Thank you so much. Thank you for inviting me, Aida. It's no, been a pleasure. No. And yeah, um, thank you everyone that's joined and watched. If you have any questions, you can always message me or send me a DM. Um, yeah, um, Great. very nice to see you all. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye.